Starball is one of the most engaging experiences I've ever had in the planetarium, and I've been in planetariums all of my adult life. My favorite thing about Starball is that it's different every time. I've seen it at least six times now, and it's never the same twice. It's like nothing else we've seen in a planetarium live. It's one of the most successful shows I've seen in involving the audience members. It's awesome to see the audience respond. John and Dan are such fantastic singers. They connect with the audience in a really interesting way, and people just really get into it. Starball gives people a chance to connect our dreams with the most expansive external things, the stars. Underneath the sky, you have a chance to really affect and change the audience. I mean, they're looking at the furthest points of light that a human being can see. And that's the same sky that people saw thousands of years ago. Starball is theater inside of a planetarium that incorporates actual astronomy with new constellations that we make up with the audience based on their dreams. We uh, incorporate music uh, which we share then with the audience. So the audience participation is both based on the dreams that they bring in as well as the music that we make together. We want them to have a blast and hear the music and get the theatricality, the characters. The Starball program always begins with the story of our connection to the very first dream. Because we think that will get them to that emotional place where they can really experience the sky. The very first dream was of stars and rocks and The coolest animals. place to be was the planetarium, the place where you could really see something amazing and make an incredible connection with an audience. I have huge respect for the planetarium as a teaching tool. Dan and I have a lot of experience in theater, musical theater. Oh, I think that both of our theatrical backgrounds and uh, uh, chosen vocations mm -hmm. bring to life this planetarium show. And that's the experience we bring to Starball. We want to give people the experience of looking up and seeing the stars. But it's not just putting the stars up there, it's finding a way to get people laughing and singing and feeling that feeling. And that's one of the reasons we created the show best improv that I've ever seen in a planetarium. It's very uh, uh, innovative, you know, very great uh, shows. I love it. What I love about Starball is the energy, is the joy, is the participation, and is the fun. You don't walk out too many shows feeling like that, feeling like you not only learned something, but you had fun doing it. Come to the village to sing and play. Conductor and proxy. The proxy. Uh, is who I play in the show, and the proxy is the conductor's assistant. He runs the planetarium operations, um, sort of the astronomy expert for the evening. Welcome to the clearing. It was very courageous for you to come. Please begin by filling out your anonymous personal information forms. Doing so will allow tonight's program to begin. I play the conductor. I lead them to a clearing, a place where the stars are glorious and bright. Welcome. It was very courageous of you to break curfew to join us tonight at the clearing. This program will be presented without an intermission. No break in the action that might suggest that this is an insignificant event that can simply be put on hold with no dire consequence or loss of momentum. And the first thing that people do, as soon as they locate their seat, they have uh, a clipboard with a piece of paper and a, a pencil right there. And, um, and they begin to fill out a dream that they've had recently. I'll collect your dreams now. Just put them into the box. Excellent. Please have them folded three times. Wonderful. Here at the village, there's plenty to do. Tonight, at the clearing, we explore outer space and our inner selves. Like mythic traditions long forgotten, we will use the nighttime sky to guide us to the secret village of our collective unconscious. So we start the show by teaching people how to orient themselves using the star. We're all looking at the same stars and we can say over there in the northeast close to the horizon and use that common vocabulary that we've established. We talk a little bit about how certain constellations are at home in certain parts of the sky. We've got a lion very prominent in our springtime sky. Now, conductor, I've got a question here. Yes, Proxy. If you are born in this world in the springtime, what is your birth sign? Oh, good and then point. we what do you think? show them 
how this perspective changes as the Earth spins and the sky moves overhead. So they get a sense of navigation and also how we are moving through space, spinning on our axis and orbiting the sun. And in that light, it felt so nice with the stars over you and me. Music is a very important part of the show. Music is what facilitates the group experience in the planetarium. Whenever dreams are gathered and the sky above is clear, we ride across the sky like bandits. We stuff our dreams into cigars, light them up on a supernova, the balloons filling up with helium. So drop your ballast, here we come. All right, folks, we need your help to get to the secret village of our dreams. We can't get there without you. Look what the conductor's doing right now. He's patting his legs. He's keeping the beat. Keep the beat with us. The music in the show helps us transition from the scientific astronomy to the inner world of the mythology and the dreams. Come to the village. The same near play. Conductor and proxy. We'll show you the way. Come to the village. Pajamas okay. And we find that Visit having people sit together in the dark and listen to the live accordion, guitar, and voices helps them go to those places. And also, we get them singing along, the village, which the is very nice. The village, the village, good. We're calming, the village, we're the village. calming. Our hearts the village, are the village. calming. We're calming, the village, the village. we're calming. Our hearts the village, the village. are calming. That's it, yes. We're calming, we're calming. Good. Our hearts the village, are calming. Version, it's not a film. This is something that is happening before people's very eyes. When you're working with people and playing off of them, then you can really take them someplace where they've never been before and where I've never been before. Remember these quadrants and their associations as we move into the next part of our program. If you have a planetarium, uh, you should probably uh, give Starball a chance. I would recommend Starball to anyone looking to bring something unique and exciting into their dome. But I think it's so interactive and so based upon your own personal feelings being translated into sky mythology that I think you'd have a hook even for those often hard to catch range eight through 12 audiences. The audience is so enthralled in what they're seeing and hearing. It's just a great participatory event. Tonight we start the journey to become our own redeemer. The ideas in Starball evolved out of trying to communicate the depth of connection that early cultures had with the stars and with constellations. If you could draw a dream randomly out of the box and read it aloud to the group, please. I'm in the eighth grade. I'm ironing. There's laundry hanging everywhere around me. But when they start projecting their dreams up there, they don't want to do it just willy-nilly. They all have the same basic shared knowledge of astronomy. And you're going to find an original constellation inspired by the dream that we just read. All right? When people are in the dark, they're less self-conscious about saying the wrong thing or mm -hmm. asking a question. And also, there's no wrong answers in our show. I mean, if, if somebody points up to the stars and sees Skippy the Frog, hey, there's Skippy the Frog. And everybody in the group just goes along with it because that's what kind of show it is. I, I see Heinrich up here. Oh, you see Heinrich? Okay. Yeah, um, up here we've got his, his head right in here. Right. Okay. By having the group make up their own constellations in the stars, they could relate to the depth and meaning that these previous people had felt. Yes, yes, okay. Every show, we have this unique song that, that is unique to that particular group. And every year, we celebrate with this song. Yeah, we always got to sing our song. Remember this song? Yeah, it yeah, goes yeah, yeah. Uh, something like this. Oh, Heinrich, uh -huh. <laughs> you and your maneuver, Yeah. you suck that pony right out of the bottle as if you were a hoover. <laughs> yeah. I got the next. Welcome home, baby brother, welcome home. I like it. Everybody, let's try that. I really want to hear you. Come on, everybody. So Heinrich, home, baby brother, welcome home. Squeeze him out of the bottle and into our arms. I think what makes the show magical is it wakes people up to the fact that the same stars that have always been over their heads, people see in a new way, and they connect it with themselves. They have a personal connection with the stars. And I think that's a, an epiphany for a lot of the folks who come see the show, that the stars have never gone away, that they were always there. They just sort of 
forgotten about them in their lives. And, and that's, I think, one thing I'm really proud of is that we connect people, reconnect people to the stars mm. and also to a deeper part of themselves. Keep looking for clearings and projecting your dreams into the stars.